Well, if there's one thing that we've learned about Flight Sim 2020 since it's launched, it's that everyone is on the quest for more FPS. Although you don't need a lot of FPS in Flight Sim. In fact, if we go back to Flight Sim X, when it first launched, anyone getting double digit FPS numbers had to have had supercomputers. Today we're gonna go through some guides uh, or some options and some tweaks and stuff that you can do on your system that's safe and simple and should hopefully give you better FPS by the end of this video. And if it doesn't, I get mad at Microsoft, don't get mad at me. The all-new Enthu Pro 2 from Fantex offers the flexibility and modularity to build your next system any way you can imagine. The extremely open interior space allows for up to 12 3.5 inch drives, multiple 480 millimeter radiators, and dual systems making the Enthu Pro 2 a true workhorse for either work or play. To see the complete list of specs and to see our overview of the Enthu Pro 2, click the links in the description below. All right, so I've kind of scoured the internet uh, looking for some of the most common tips and tricks regarding getting better FPS in Flight Sim 2020. And this is coming from someone that's been playing it now on a couple of different systems. If you don't recall, this is the Origin PC Millennium system that was sent. It's got an AMD 3950X. My system at home that I've been uh, using is obviously Nebula, which is on an Intel 9980XE. It's got two more cores, four more threads in this, and a higher clock speed. And what I can tell you is that we're gonna kind of get the whole Intel versus AMD sort of just like argument out of the way right at the start because both systems suffer the same types of problems with the micro stutters or the stuttering of the terrain, the pop-ins, the slow loading. Both of them are running NVMe SSDs. The game just takes forever to load. That is just the game itself or the simulator. I'm gonna probably call it a game a million times, although I'm one of those guys that's like, it's not a game, it's a simulator, which is why it's so hard to run. No, it's hard to run because there's some bad optimizations and we're gonna try and fix those today. So we're also not screen capturing because we don't want to uh, affect our results by having our, our system also doing screen capture, although there is a capture card in there. Um, we're just lazy. So the idea here is the FPS, not about seeing it in you know full resolution or whatever. I'm gonna justify that every time and you're still gonna complain about it, so I just wasted all my breath. Obviously, we need to know where we're starting here. So we are using a 1440p monitor. Um, not 1080p, not 4K, obviously we're right in the middle. Because we're running a 3950X, 32 gigabytes of memory, and a 2080 Ti, this is kind of like the best case scenario you could possibly have until like next month when new stuff comes out. Um, I can tell you that it's only, it, the, this hardware is not giving you really any better of an experience than lower end hardware. And, and you'll see that in the optimizations and the utilization of this hardware uh, on the screen. So we are running ultra preset. We do not have V-Sync on because V-Sync is broke. It should really just be called half sync because whatever you set it to, you kind of get half that number. Um, render scaling, all that stuff, it's all default. So let's do this. We are gonna go ahead and yes, I'm using a controller because I forgot to bring my yoke. Um, why did the game just crash? Literally crash in the middle of this video. <laughs> all right, so I'm in a little cub here flying around New York City. And a couple of things we want to notice right here is one, I'm getting about 44 FPS, which isn't bad. Remember, I am in 1440p. Um, the scenery is already loaded because we started here, so we didn't slew to it or anything. You can see we're getting about 40, 45 FPS. But take a look at the utilization. There's only a couple of cores anywhere near 100. And you can see there's an awful lot of zeros and low utilization there. And that's just because this game, for whatever reason, just is not. That's, that's kind of a stuttery mess when we're turning, huh? Now you have to remember, the game is gonna, uh, the camera is gonna be smoothing this out for you and making it consistent frames where the game is all over the place in terms of like little micro stutters and stuff. Well, let's change the weather a little bit too. So we'll do clear skies versus, oh, it's high level clouds versus broken clouds. There we go. I think New York looks a lot like that more often than not. So like I said, we are not, and I'm just kind of going back and forth between the Empire State Building and the Freedom Tower here to just stay in this really, dude, New York looks so good. Okay, so we're in the 40s, as you can see. Let's see if we can get that higher, but we're not gonna do that with the game yet. There's a couple things we wanna change in Windows and our overlay settings and stuff to try and get this looking good. So like I said, I've kind of compiled a list of things that tend to um, be what people recommend right here. First thing we're gonna start with is game mode, and it is already on. So make sure that's on. Sometimes this is off by default, and all this basically does is it really starts to sort of allocate priority to, to any sort of a gaming executable that's running. Um, you would think that Microsoft would automatically recommend or recognize that Flight Sim is running and would give it priority, but make sure that game mode is on. 
The other thing we're going to do is make sure that background recording is off. So that's going to be in captures, record in the background when I'm playing a game. That is off by default. Okay, so these, like, so this is kind of like an always on DVR. Uh, where you have the greatest game ever, you can actually go back and recover that from Windows recording. You want to make sure that's off. Anything that's running in the background like that can obviously have an impact on your gaming performance. Fortunately, this is off already. I was hoping to find it on, so we might find some improvements. The other thing we're going to do right now is we are going to double check our driver version. Um, apparently, this is the first time we've opened Control Panel on this machine. So we're on 451.67. Now, we know for a fact that NVIDIA came out with a driver on the 17th. And I've had this computer since prior to the 17th. So I'm going to assume that this driver is slightly out of date. Um, I'm not sure how much the driver update is really going to help. It might help with some various stutters and things. But in terms of FPS, you saw the GPU wasn't being fully, fully utilized even at 1440p with max settings. And that's probably because there's just not enough happening with the CPU. And it's not throwing enough frames to obviously be able to utilize uh, all of its. All right, so our driver is installed. So we are going to do a couple of things here. Let's make sure it didn't slow us down, so we're set at 144. Um, 3D settings, These are. this is something I always change, and I get better performance in all of my games because I want to keep the GPU running as fast as possible um, at all times. So instead of setting it power management mode in the 3D settings to optimal power, I always go prefer maximum performance. And then when it comes to texture filtering, I always go from quality to high performance. And we've seen this actually give us a significant bump in performance in our 3D Mark scores. It's going to make your GPU probably not idle down as much. So if you're the kind of person that's like, no, I want it to completely throttle down when I'm not doing anything, then you may not want to change this. But I want to see if this gives us an improvement in the game whatsoever. Because if the GPU is constantly seeing this low utilization, then what it's going to do is it's not going to clock up all the way. It's, it's going to like go to its base clock or something like that, and then come up from idle to base and never give you the boost. This will make it want to go to boost. Um, the other thing that we're going to do too is we're going to make sure I don't think GeForce Experience is installed on this computer. No, it's not. If GeForce Experience was on, also make sure Shadow Play is off for the same reason I mentioned for the HDR recording or the, the DVR recording in Windows. So there's one other thing I want to do too. I don't know if this is going to actually work, but I'm going to try it. With the game running and the executable going, we're going to go in and set the affinity and the priority on Microsoft Flight Sim to real time. Now that's what game mode should be doing, but I'm not sure if it's doing anything. So I'm gonna kind of just brute force it myself and I'll show you guys how to do that in a sec. All right, so here we are back in New York. I would say that's already a very measurable increase considering we are at 60 FPS. So we are up a solid 10, almost 10 FPS. Now I was kind of going around in circles right here in between, like I said, the Empire State Building and the uh, the Freedom Tower, so let's see. But look how consistent it is, though. So we can call this between 5 to 10 FPS just by the driver update, probably. I'm going to real-time overclock this graphics card. So you can see it went up to the clock because we have that prefer maximum performance. So it's not letting it fluctuate with its different, uh, like normally at 73%, that would be down. Everything we just did was good for about a solid 8 FPS or so. And you can see so far, we haven't spent any money on anything. We haven't upgraded any hardware. <laughs> anything to upgrade, but that's fine. Let's now take a look at some of the game settings because this is where you're going to be able to actually make some, some serious improvements. Now, here are the settings that give you the biggest impact on performance. Depth of field, bloom, reflections to a degree, shadow maps, texture synthesis, and super sampling. These right here cause the biggest impact to performance. And some of the other things we're gonna change here obviously is trees, and we're gonna change object level detail and train detail. So we're gonna start by taking just the detail levels on things, but leaving this all the same, and we're gonna drop these to 100. 100 is the equivalent of high setting. So we're only dropping the two sliders on level of detail uh, for terrain and grass, or not grass, uh, objects. <laughs> so look at that, that alone got us 10 FPS. And we haven't changed any of the super sampling stuff yet. So now we are flying around downtown New York, or excuse me, Manhattan. And now in the same spot where I was getting 40s when I was doing my little loop, my little circles here, my spirals, we are getting 10 FPS more. Would you call that 10, Phil? Look at that, 65? Okay, so now we've got our 60 FPS number. And look at when we move the camera around now. No, no stutters. It's not pausing at all. 
Let's now go down to what I feel is the second most important thing to change right here. Now water waves, this only really comes into play when you're down close to the ground and you actually see the white caps and stuff on the water. I think that's something that we could easily set to medium and not notice any sort of negative effect in terms of fidelity and the way it looks. But texture maps, we are gonna drop this down to 768. You might actually see some jaggies in the shadows real close to the ground but you're not gonna see it when you're up in the air flying at any altitude whatsoever. I'd say even 500 feet, it would be better than, uh, you know, than sitting on the ground. It's gonna smooth it out. But we're also gonna change here the uh, six by six on texture super sampling. We're gonna go four by four. Now that's something you can get away with the higher the resolution, you can drop it down to as low as two by two, but this is gonna have something to do also with the amount of available VRAM. Now because we have 11 gigabytes of VRAM, we could get away with six by six, but I don't believe the actual improvement to the look of the game is worth the performance hit. So you just saw me change right now, super sampling and the uh, shadow map. So those two settings, settings hit apply. Look what happened to the FPS just in the menu alone. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get out of here, unpause. And it looks like that didn't really change too much here. Part of the, the terrain detail too is there's no mountains here. So I think one thing we'll do is we'll check that one setting in like Alaska before we end this video. But as you can see, we're still sitting at about 60 FPS. I wonder if shadow maps only applies to objects and then terrain shadows is what the other stuff are casting. What's funny is like the shadows, well, because it's also noon, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so ball. why don't we change, well, let's keep going through the settings and we'll change the, the time of day and let them cast long shadows because right now it's like noon. So in summertime, so it's nearly straight up. Um, one other thing I want to change right here is let's come down here to, also, I'm not going to change anti-aliasing from TAA. Temporal anti-aliasing looks the best. When you drop that, even one setting down to DLAA or directionally localized anti-aliasing, it just looks so bad. Just leave it on TAA, don't go FXAA, just leave it, trust me. It's the, the, you, will, you might see more FPS, but it will look so bad, you just are not gonna be happy there. And as you can see right here in New York, at this time of day, it really didn't do anything for performance. If we look out the window, the trees still look all right. It didn't really take away any of the fluffiness to them. It seems like right around 60 FPS is where we're kind of locking it now. Here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna go ahead and we're gonna end this flight. We're gonna go to Alaska, because that's, that's gonna be the best place to actually test the terrain detail slider to see what that does. And then we're gonna go to Tokyo. And the reason why we're gonna go to Tokyo is I have no idea why, but my system at home, when I loaded Tokyo for the first five minutes of the flight, I was getting like 15 FPS. And yes, I was flying where I loaded into it. I didn't slew anywhere. So that just, I don't know. All right, so ter terrain detail would affect obviously like the tessellation of the mountains and such essentially is what it's doing. Look at this, you would think that's a photo, huh? So one thing we're noticing is I'm getting way more of this pausing after we change the priority of the process. So I think what we'll do is we'll make it high right now instead of real time. So we are gonna go ahead and make flight sim stop being the number one priority on here. We're gonna go back to set priority to high. That should hopefully stop the weirdness we were dealing with there. All right, so we're gonna change something here that I'm curious as to what it's gonna to do to performance because Phil and I have seen this help in the past in other titles and programs. You might have noticed that we were getting 60 to 65 FPS in New York um, with no noticeable visual fidelity loss whatsoever. It still looked crisp, it, it, anti-aliasing was great, shadows were great, the bloom and all that you saw really didn't hurt too much, so we left all that on. And remember, we are going through these settings and learning as we go with you. That's why it may seem like, oh, he talked about a thing that didn't really matter because we're kind of showing you how those effects are. But obviously we have a 3950X in here. So we installed Ryzen Master on here and we are gonna now turn on game mode, which is gonna essentially turn off one of the CCXs. You saw how underutilized this CPU is. So what we don't want it doing is handing off tasks to the other CCX, which then communicates through the affinity fabric in terms of memory and all that, creating potential latency. That is why game mode exists in Ryzen. So I want to see if enabling game mode on here will give us any sort of improvement. Now we also did make sure that XMP is enabled on the memory. This is a very memory intensive title as well, so we want to make sure our memory is running as fast as possible. All right, so with game mode enabled, 
I'll, I'll say our average FPS is much, much the same, but I feel like we are getting spikes up into the 70s. We weren't seeing 70s before at all. So here's our loop. Okay, this is kind of insane. The way it really looks smooth for sure. Absolutely, no stutters or anything whatsoever. Look at this. When you stall, you just pull back harder, right? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say that our changes clearly did something. All right, so one of the things that we just turned on right now to see if it affects things is AI traffic, live traffic, sorry, I said AI traffic. Um, yeah, live traffic where it's gonna be putting planes in real spots where they really are in real life. And I wanted to see what the effect was gonna be because right now with the current situation in the world, there's, a, there's the least amount of planes in the air than there's ever been at any one time. So AI traffic actually puts more planes in there. However, now by putting in live traffic, it's having to pull the server way more often to find out where the planes are. Like right now with AI tra or, uh, live traffic on, if I went to the map, you'd see a little green dot moving, even if I pause it, because that plane's really moving. All right, so it looks like there might be a little bit of a performance hit, maybe five FPS, five to seven FPS hit. All right, so live traffic, a little bit of a performance hit. Looks like about 10, almost 10%, about 10%. Uh, okay, uh, I'm getting 60 FPS in Tokyo which was not happening at home on Nebula. I don't know what the heck was happening. Yeah, see how steady this is? I don't know what it is about Tokyo. But I know what you guys are already saying. Jay, not everyone has a 2080 Ti. Well, let's throw a 2060 in here and see what happens. All right, so we threw our EVGA GeForce 2060 Super in here. This is an ultra two fan card, um, but still based on the Founders Edition because it's got the short PCB. So, <clears throat> I got, is there a founder? Yeah, I guess there's a Founders 26 Super. All the GPU settings are the same. I didn't change anything. It's got eight gigabytes of VRAM, but it's a much more realistic GPU that people would be trying to play this game on than a 2080 Ti, obviously. So we're back in New York, and um, I mean, I expect there to be some level of performance degradation. But check this out. Even with a 2060 right now, we are at we are at higher FPS than we started with the 2080 Ti with these settings. Let's just kind of make our way around right here. 50 FPS is where we're chilling. Where's the Freedom Tower? There it is. I mean, it's still really smooth. And look at that. It's just hovering between 47 and 50. Like, the GPU is loaded though, you see it, 98%. So it does become a point where the GPU clearly makes a, a difference. Well, the amount of people that I've seen commenting saying that they're getting 20 to 25 FPS, even with their high-end hardware, I think clearly are just not doing any sort of like true optimizations, whatever like we're trying to do right here. And I think I have a feeling on what setting would bring this back up to close to 60. I think if we went over here to four by four, it's medium, texture synthesis, if we put this on, let's say medium, shadows, and put that to 512. And then we'll just do like ambient occlusion high, windshield effects high, turn depth of field to off. So as you can see, we are mid 50s, almost 60 FPS in a highly den dense, <laughs> pop, uh, pencilly dopulated, densely populated area like New York. Back down to 50, 52. Let's do our little circle test here. Look at that, it's so steady on a 2060 Super with a, a CPU that's like more like a 3800 or a 3700 X because remember we turned off half of them right now. And I think you can see right now that if you actually take the time to tune your game, you can obviously get a very, very good experience. So I hope this video has helped you get more FPS in your flight simulator game. If you've got a tip or a trick that we maybe didn't cover here today that could give you better performance, why don't you go ahead and comment down below on what those tweaks are and how well it did for you, and more importantly, what your hardware is. I think the most important hardware anyone can do to their system to get a better flight sim experience is gonna be system memory. Fast memory and lots of it. Turn on that XMP, you have to have at least 16 gigabytes, and if you have room for another 16 gigs, and you wanna play flight sim, might be time to do that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully your flight sim's as smooth as ours now and you're doing aileron rolls and crazy split S maneuvers in your cub because we all know this is exactly why we got a flight sim, not for those nice little 
hops across the pond or little fly in meet and greets on multiplayer. It's to do this crap in downtown New York. With a PlayStation controller. With a PlayStation controller. <laughs> uh, 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 uh,